to the Great Bay Country Store. What are you looking to purchase today? We have many things from all of the different towns all around Great Bay. These towns were so important to everyone that lived around Great Bay in the early 1800s because all these towns produced different things. And the country stores were the places that people came, not only to buy their goods, but also to get a little gossip, to get their mail, and to just see their friends. Have you ever been to a country store? There are still lots of country stores around New Hampshire. Let's see, there's Spallett's in Chester, there's Zeb's in North Conway, there's Caleb's in Barrington, that's my favorite because that's what I live closest to. And what's your favorite thing to get at a country store? I think mine is the apple cider donuts, but a lot of people like the pickles in a barrel or the stinky cheese. You decide what you like best and visit a local country store. How do you get the groceries that you need when you're at home? Do your parents go to a local grocery store? How do you get there? By car? That's probably your choice today. But back in the early 1800s, by car was not a choice. Things that needed to get to the local country stores had to come by different means. Maybe it was a cart pulled by a horse or a cow. Maybe it was a train. The trains came through uh, the Great Bay region, this area in particular, about 1841. And they were great at transporting lots of goods. But before that, if you wanted to transport heavy loads of goods, carts probably weren't the best way to go. So people came up with a different way. And that was the gondola. The Piscataqua gondola was the best way to transport large quantities of goods. It was like the 18-wheeler back then. These flat bottom barges could have tons of material on their deck. And they were special because they could pull right up to the edge of the salt marsh along Great Bay, unload their goods, load the goods from the other towns they were going to, and then transport it all around and even out to the mouth of the Piscataqua River in Portsmouth to go to far reaches around the world. It not only had the flat bottom, but it also had what's called a yard that's attached to a small, you might recognize this as a mast. This is called a stump mast. And the yard attached to it here that had the lateen sail on it was actually able to be raised and lowered all the way down to the top of the cuddy where the captain would be. And this was important because all around Great Bay, at the different rivers that entered into the different towns, there were bridges. And to get these big boats up to the towns, you had to go under the bridges and the yard could be easily lowered in order to do that. Now, gondolas weren't very seaworthy and once they got out to Portsmouth, the goods that went around to other parts of the world had to be loaded on bigger boats. Now, these boats did not have a flat bottom and they were able to go in uh, heavy winds and high seas and travel down to places uh, like Boston and beyond. Now that we know how the goods were transported around Great Bay, let's take a look at what the different towns all around Great Bay specialized in. So we are in the town of Stratton. We're kind of on the Stratton Greenland line, but let's talk about what Stratton is very famous for. And right here in my country store, we have a big basket of apples. And Stratton was really famous for their apple orchards and also pig farms. Now Exeter would be the next one if you were to travel from Stratton to uh, Exeter. And Exeter was very famous for its grist mills. You might not know what a grist mill was, but it was the way that they made grains uh, like wheat 
into flour. They used the power of the water that flowed through the river, like the Exeter River. There was a big stone grinder, and as the water went over the water wheel, it would turn that stone and grind the grain into whatever kind of flour they wanted. So here's our little bag of flour that would have been made in Exeter. The next town, as we travel by Gundalo, would be Newmarket. And Newmarket was famous for its mills that produced millions of yards of cloth. Look at all the different kinds of cloth I have here. Which would you like to make, make a pair of pants out of? Or maybe a special apron, just like I have. Now, how did cloth, how was cloth made? What did it come from? Many of the types of cloth that they made was made from cotton. Now, cotton, you might have never seen this before. Cotton is a plant. And this is what is picked off of the cotton plant. And the fluffy stuff was what was spun into the different fabrics. This is what we know of cotton. There's actually little tiny seeds, cotton seeds in here, you can see. So they would have to get those out first, too, before it was spun into the fabric. Now, cotton didn't come from around here. Cotton actually grows in more southern places where it's warmer. So that was something that had to be transported up to Exeter before it was made. So our next town would be Durham. And Durham was famous for its hay. So I have a little bale of hay here. And it was famous for its upland hay, but we also know that there was salt marsh hay that was produced. Kind of an interesting thing that we learned about this is that salt marsh hay was fed to their horses and cows until they determined that they didn't really like the flavor of the milk that they were getting from the cows. Can you guess what it tasted like? Yep, kind of salty. So then one they were once they cut more trees down and made more uh, places that they, they could grow hay in the uplands, they went to the hay that was not from the salt marshes. Our next town would be Dover, and Dover was really famous for making bricks. So we've got some different colored bricks here from different colored clay, and that's what bricks are made from. And Great Bay, underneath the salt marshes, has lots and lots of raw clay. So the bricks that were made in Dover, the clay that was harvested from underneath the salt marshes was transported to Dover, probably on the gondolas, and then the bricks were fired in the brickyards. If you've ever been to Boston, maybe you traveled down the streets of Beacon Hill and saw some of the houses that are built there. Did you know that the bricks that were made in Dover from Great Bay Clay were actually the same bricks that you see in those houses on Beacon Hill? Pretty neat fact. So now we're traveling down to Portsmouth with our gondola. And Portsmouth exported all the products that came from the inland ports and imported products such as sugar and molasses from the West Indies, dishes, cloth, and tools from England, and corn, wheat, and peas from Virginia. Another local product transported to various ports was smoked fish. Sometimes it came in boxes. In the early 1900s, there were 83 operating smoking houses to process the fish in the region. Sugar, like cotton, didn't come from around here. Sugar actually comes from sugar cane, which is a plant. And the cane was squeezed and the liquid that came out was then made into sugar. Sugar used to be sold in a sugar cone wrapped in blue paper. Sugar back then was really expensive and only the most wealthy people had it and tiny, tiny bits of it would have been taken off at a time. And most people, because they didn't have sugar, used other sweeteners. Can you think of any? Well, molasses and honey would have been a couple of the ones they used. So you could get a jug of molasses that was imported from places like the West Indies and was a byproduct of making sugar from sugar cane. Think of anything that you can make molasses with? 
do some molasses cookies. Some people like it on their waffles. Necker wafers could have been found in country stores too. This company has been around since 1847 and it's based out of, out of Revere in Boston. And Necco stands for New England Confectionery Company. And we have a box here that would have been used way back when, and it actually you can read on there, New England Confectionery Company, Boston Mass. Approximately four billion Necco wafers are produced each year. That's enough to encircle the earth twice, Necco wafers end to end. So the next time you're in a country store, make sure you look for a Necco wafer candy, just like this, and try one for yourself. Now that you've chosen all the products from the different towns around Great Bay, you can go home, bake your apple pie, sew your apron, have some Necco wafers, repair your chimney, feed your horses and cows, and have fish chowder for dinner. Thank <laughs> you.